Hello, this is Will from Jenga FX. In this video, I'm going to break down some of the best practices when working with imported meshes inside of Embergen. Starting with the most important aspect, frame rate. You can see that my animation's original FPS is 30. And when I enable this override FPS setting, the import node duration on the timeline matches the frame count that you see in the playback tab. That's because Embergen naturally runs at 60 hertz or 60 frames per second. And so Embergen is going to interpret your mesh with the original FPS, 30 frames per second. So you'll want to make sure that you go into the playback tab and enable this override FPS setting. What this is doing is taking the frame rate of your mesh and remapping it to the indicated FPS setting, which we have at 60 here. We also recommend keeping your time step at 60 hertz because the simulation parameters of Embergen are optimized for 60 hertz. And the more that you deviate from that time step, the more unpredictable your simulation gets. And with this enabled, we can head over to the masking section. You can see that the mesh has a red fist. Uh, if your mesh has vertex paint on it, it'll show up in the viewport like this. And in the mask tab, in the mesh section, I have the surface selected and the vertex color red selected. And you can see that when I play this back, the emission is only coming out of the fist. It's important to note that I don't have the geometry pin plugged in anywhere. I'm using the mask one section as the geometry pin would emit from the entire imported mesh. Additionally, you can see that the paint fades as you go up the arm. And if I increase my reference value, the emission is only going to happen at the more red parts of the fist. And I have this to demonstrate that. So I'll pull it down and you can see that it's emitting here. And as I pull it up, you can see that it's getting closer and closer to the fist. And once I get to 0.97, it's only happening uh, on the hand and not on the forearm. This allows precise control as well as keyframe options if you want to animate the reference value of your vertex maps, since Embergen does not support animated vertex maps at this time. I also have Mask 2 plugged into the collider here, and the Mask 2 selection is just the joints, which are the spheres uh, at each joint of the mesh. This helps give a little bit more velocity transfer as the mesh swings its fist. It's also helpful to consider the simulation you're trying to create and how to maximize your resources. Since the only part of this simulation that I need is the fist, having the simulation cover this whole area is kind of a waste of voxels. Unfortunately, the simulation bounding box isn't mobile, so I'll have to reposition my mesh and optimize the space. So what I'm gonna do is take my mesh and drag it down and in my simulation node, go to the simulation size and try to reposition this to maximize the number of voxels that are active in the simulation. And you can see that I also have a primitive here that is matching the movement of the hand. And now I need to uh, reposition that mesh to match where I put the import node. So what I'm gonna do is go to my keyframes here and turn off these. And in the graph editor, turn off these. And you can see when I select all of the uh, keyframes that Unfortunately, I can drag them everywhere, but as I hover over, you can see at the bottom that we have a few indicators that tell us the commands to move these vertically or horizontally. So with shift control click, we can drag this down. And I know that as long as I meet the position of the hand in the Z space, that it'll more or less line up with the way that I initially had it. There we go. If you're having trouble getting your mesh to import into Embergen, one thing to make sure of is that your mesh is stored locally and not on a network drive. If it's local and still not importing properly, 
A helpful tool is to use a third-party app to test your mesh. I use Blender since it's free and very capable. If your mesh looks correct in Blender, sometimes you're able to re-export it from there and it'll work in Embergen. If this is the case, we ask that you reach out to us about it so that we can take a look and see what we can change on our side, but it's a workaround for the time being so that you can keep working on your project. Also, another thing to note is to make sure that your camera aspect ratio is the aspect ratio that you want for your final output. The render size is ultimately dictated by the render node, but the camera size needs to match that ratio. And that's it. Hopefully this addresses many of the issues that you could face early on. And please let us know what else you need help with in the comments.